CBS News Miami. Hey, happy 4th of July. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Chelsea Jones and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's get a look at today's top stories, but first we're going to start with that heat. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. Giving you a live look outside. Look at that beautiful sunny. We did have a mix of sun and rain across South Florida today. You're definitely feeling those temperatures. I know it. But what does your fireworks forecast look like? Uh, Next Weather Meteorologist Chief, that is. Ivan Cabrera joining us with the breakdown for that. Yeah, good to see you here on the 4th. I think we're all ready for uh, some fireworks tonight. And in fact, I think we're looking good. No changes from uh, my thinking yesterday, which is the thunderstorms continue pushing out towards the west, so we're in good shape. Yes, we do have this heat advisory that goes uh, through 7 p.m., and that's because we've had heat index or feels like temperatures well into the 100s. We're actually below that criteria because we've had showers and storms developing along the sea breeze. Some of the outflow boundaries have helped cool this off, so, you know, this is more tolerable, still hot and humid, and, of course, oppressive down towards the Keys, where temperatures right now feel like between uh, 104 and 107, but I think the peak heating of the day is done at this point here as we've had our Seabreeze come in. There is Next Radar Network with one lone thunderstorm here across Western, but it's not moving all that much. So it's uh, dumping some pretty good rain right on top of you there as this will continue uh, to rain itself out. A few more lightning strikes and then we'll see some improvement. But uh, following the boundary, it's made uh, progress all the way inland here and now towards uh, inland Monroe. We're looking at some showers and storms. Here's what's going to happen the next few hours. Notice a few more showers, extreme western neighborhoods. That would be it as far as a shower threat for this evening uh, right along uh, the Metros here in the coast certainly looking quiet with temperatures in the 80s. It'll feel like about still in the 90s, uh, you know, by the time we get into fireworks time. So tomorrow, same deal. The strong Atlantic breeze that's called the shots today and pushed the storms west. That's going to be with us through tomorrow and heading into the day on to Thursday as well. But then towards the end of the week, more like Friday and Saturday, we're actually going to get a southwesterly push. And so that's important because that's where the storms, you know, end up. And by Thursday, Friday, and particularly Saturday, they'll end up on the metro with that southwest push, but notice for the rest of uh, tonight and into tomorrow, quiet here through the morning uh, between six and nine o'clock. We could see a couple of isolated coastal showers. That would be it with that stronger southeast breeze. And there you see a very similar setup to today. We have the showers and storms right along the sea breeze and then they head in the other direction. So I think we're looking good. Quick check on the tropics. There's nothing to worry about here, so we are going to relax on our 4th of July with quiet conditions in the Gulf. A few tropical waves out there, but I'm looking out two weeks. I don't see anything, so that is uh, good news there, and the NHC officially has it to uh, seven days. Moderate uh, rip currents. Today they're low, but the winds continue to pick up, and so I think for tomorrow we'll throw that in there as far as uh, moderate uh, risk if you're going to continue uh, headed out to the beach and swimming. Good for you. There is the uh, forecast for the fireworks time frame around 9 o'clock, and that will set us up with, uh, again, temperatures in the 80s. Feels like numbers in the 90s, but the important thing is I think we'll be dry at that point, and we'll keep it going here. Hot temperatures in the 90s with afternoon rain chances. All right, Ivan, so those temperatures didn't keep people away from those Independence Day celebrations. A parade was held in Miami Springs, a tradition that's been going on and strong since 1926. CBS News Miami's Jacqueline Quinn takes us there. America turns 247 years old this year and Miami Springs here. They have their own tradition of wishing the country a happy birthday. Happy 4th of July. The Miami Springs Parade dates back to 1926, a tradition that started with cars lining up with officials and civic groups. <laughs> You, you'll see it all up and down. Everybody loves to bring their vehicles into the into these parades like that. It's a tradition that people like Gabriel Baker, a Marine veteran, is helping to continue. For him, he gets to showcase not only his pride for the country, but his hobby, restoring old cars like this Chevy pickup truck. I bought an old truck because my grandfather used to have old vehicles, and so I always keep an old vehicle. I mean, I buy old, I know how to work on it, and I want the kids, my twins here, to both uh, be able to know how to work on it and enjoy being in old vehicles. Festivities and fun aside, the holiday has deep meaning for Baker's son, Lucas. It means, it means to me to respect America and the veterans who, who say, who, spared their lives to us, sacrificed themselves for, for our country. 
Some out here have been coming for a couple years. Third year? Third year. Third year. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, what do you guys think? What's the favorite part? Oh, I love it. I love it. The community gets together. We're so all nice. like a big family here. We all know each other. Others have been coming for decades, but many feel it's a great cause to celebrate unity under red, white, and blue, hoping this tradition will continue for years to come. In Miami Springs, I'm Jacqueline Quinn, CBS News, Miami. Well, travelers on this 4th of July are bracing for more possible flight disruptions as severe weather continues to roll through parts of our country. So far, more than 800 flights have been delayed and more than 700 flights have been canceled. CBS News Miami's Naomi Ruckham has the latest. Frustrated travelers are still reeling from flight delays and cancellations this 4th of July. I'm really like overwhelmed. This is too much. I just want to get to Los Angeles. Severe weather and staffing shortages caused thousands of flight cancellations and delays over the past 10 days, upending travel plans for millions. Today, more storms are expected to move through the Northeast and the Plains, which could cause even more disruptions. I'm hoping that I traveled the right time here, and I'm hoping that going back is the right time as well. United Airlines says it has dished out 30,000 flyer miles to customers whose flights were canceled or delayed last week. It comes as AAA predicts more than 4 million Americans will take to the skies this July 4th holiday. Though the bulk of travelers, more than 43 million, will hit the highways. Slow down and allow extra time to get to wherever you're going to. One added perk at the pump this Independence Day, AAA says drivers will pay over a dollar less for a gallon of gas in many parts of the country compared to this time last year. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. So let's talk about things here in South Florida. Our airport is doing much better. Just a handful of flights have been either delayed or canceled between both MIA and FLL. But as a reminder, check with your airlines before you head to the airport. Well, this 4th of July is the busiest and often the deadliest time for the boating season. According to Florida Fish and Wildlife, there were 735 boating accidents last year. SeaTo Captain Peter Dominguez walks us through important safety tips for everyone who's out on the water. Well, it depends on the challenge. If it's weather related, you know, you're always better off sitting tight, trying to find safe shelter rather than going through any kind of storm or any kind of bad weather. Um, if you do find yourself in an emergency situation, this is the kind of equipment you want to have on board. Uh, you want to have life jackets for all your passengers, fire extinguisher, emergency flares so you can it's easy to find you if you're if you are in an emergency situation some sort of sound device a whistle or, or an air horn or a horn on the boat that you can signal other boaters or if they're you know if you're not in trouble but maybe they're getting too close if you're boating alone a, a self-inflating pfd is definitely the most comfortable way to protect yourself as a solo captain and a vhf radio is def a definite necessity of your um you know boating out of cell phone range and just in case, a reminder for you, if you need help while you're out on the water, you can reach out to CETO at 800-4-CETO. We have more news for you when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. So nearly a year after a South Florida teenager was shot and killed, Miami-Dade police have made an arrest in the case. 18-year-old William Garrido has been charged with second-degree murder and the shooting death of 14-year-old Angelo Guzman. It happened back in September of last year at Sandpiper Park in southwest Miami-Dade. Police say the teen was at a family gathering and had walked away to meet up with his friends when shots rang out. Guzman died at the scene. Police in Weston are looking for a man accused of voyeurism. Investigators say surveillance video shows the suspect trespassing at a home and is seen touching himself inappropriately while people were inside. Police say the man ran off as soon as he was spotted. Now the man was wearing some unusual attire. He was wearing a sport coat, dress pants and dress shoes. He also had a beard and slicked back hair. If you have any information that can help catch this person, police are asking you to give them a call. New body camera video released by Lauder Hill Police shows the moment an officer was hit by a driver during a traffic stop. You have your driver's license? Okay, can you leave me at my house? Thank you. No. You don't have Give to me your write, driver's license. You don't have to write that. You don't have to write to do that. Alpha 12. Send me a 94. <laughs> Stop the oh! car! Stop the car!
Well, this all happened Saturday night along Northwest 44th Street. Police say 27 year old Krista Lee Panther opened the driver's side door, accelerated, hitting the officer with the door. She then sped off, but then she crashed into a tree. The officer was taken to the hospital where he was treated and released. The driver is charged with aggravated battery of a law enforcement officer, among other charges. A world record attempt for Monroe County's 200th birthday. Two chefs in Key West prepared a massive version of the Key's signature dessert, Key Lime Pie. It was made with juice from several thousand Key Limes, more than 55 gallons of sweetened condensed milk, and more than 200 pounds of graham crackers. The pie size will be submitted for the world record certification. Massive. Well, the power of the CBS News Miami stream are always at your fingertips. We're also on Pluto TV. It's all free for you. And you can always find us on your favorite streaming device with the CBS News app. Just click on CBS News Miami. That'll do it for CBS News Miami's quick cast. I'm Chelsea Jones. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS Miami.